Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be talking about some of the most popular guns and vehicles in Battlefield 1 and also attribute that to how well the game is balanced. Is there a relatively equal usage of weapons and vehicles or is everybody gravitating towards just a few of them? Thanks to the website BattlefieldTracker.com I was able to make some insights using their graphs and API system which has been tracking Battlefield 1 statistics for a while. Now the first and probably not too surprising statistic for some of you out there is the most popular weapon in the game and that is for the most popular class in the game as well which is the assault class and drum roll it is the automatico not that big of a surprise i am sure many of you have been killed many times by that weapon however in a close second is the hellregal smg and considering that that one requires assault class rank 10 in order to use it it could be the more desirable weapon even though it's not being used quite as much as the automatico it's also a weapon that not as many players have so if that gun was unlocked at the same time as the automatico i have a feeling we'd end up seeing maybe it being used even a bit more now this next gun I want to talk about kind of debunks one of the uh, ideas that's been perpetuated through the Battlefield 1 community, which is that nobody plays Medic. Actually, a lot of people play Medic. It's the second most popular class in the game, and it's certainly not that far behind the Assault class. Unsurprisingly, the most popular gun for this class is the Sebsta Ladder, if you combine all the different variants of it. Most people are using that weapon very very effectively however if you look at a single variant of any weapon for the medic class the m1907 sweeper variant is actually the most used and generates the most kills out of any of the guns for the medic class because it is a great aggressive weapon and for those of you tired of playing the medic in the backfield and want to be a more aggressive play up there with your assault classes and be able to revive them and keep everybody alive this is a great option. Now the next most used class, and quite frankly it's almost tied with the medic class, is the scout class. The assault class, medic class, and scout class really aren't that far apart in terms of how many people play them. The assault is the most popular, but only by, I don't know, maybe like six percentage points. It's not a huge percentage comparatively to the other two. And again, medic and scout are pretty much neck and neck. Something interesting though about the scout class is that even though it's played almost as much as the medic class, it gets far less kills than the medic class overall. Um, significantly less kills than the assault class. And I think this is in part due to the fact that sniping as a class or as something to do in a video game is an attractive thing. Like people like the idea of sitting in the backfield and taking out their targets at like a mile away. But it requires a lot more skill to get a kill with the scout class than it does the average class. So I think it attracts a lot of players that perhaps don't have the skill level to quite um, take advantage of the class. And therefore you see less kills versus the time spent playing the class compared to some of the other classes in the game. For a while, the Martini Henry was on the rise in terms of popularity. Now that's a rifle that requires scout class rank 10 in order to unlock, but for a while it was by far the most popular sniper rifle in the game. However, the Martini Henry got nerfed by the patch that basically made it so it wasn't a one-shot kill if you shot people um, in like the arms or other off areas of center mass, and that made it far less effective, and it had a direct decline after that patch, and the SMLE Marksman variant took over as the new most popular sniper rifle in the game. And I've done plenty of videos about the SMLE, whether it's the SMLE Marksman or some of the infantry variants of the weapon just with iron sights alone. It is a great sniper rifle. The sweet spot is very forgiving on that one. It allows the sniper to be a little bit more aggressive. Now the Martini Henry fell so far that it actually dipped below the Russian 1895 sniper um, for second place. So the Russian 1895 sniper is now the second most used sniper rifle. Also a very good sniper rifle. What I would recommend using if you need something uh, designed for a little bit more range than the SMLE Marksman. Now the support class, the least popular class at the moment, has been on a nice little bit of a growth spurt since the last patch that upgraded a lot of the LMGs and made them less shitty. It is the still least popular class in the game. Um, but there are some guns that kind of stand out among the rest. In fact, I would say there's two guns that stand out and then the rest of them just kind of fall way behind the other. 
First of all, the most popular gun by far is the BAR, and specifically the most popular variant is the BAR Storm, or the Bar Storm. Despite it only having a 20 round magazine, the effectiveness of this weapon supersedes pretty much anything else that the support class carries right now, and it just allows you to mow people down incredibly fast and at medium range. Sure, it's really designed for one, maybe two kills at max per magazine, but even so, I would rather win the firefight than have a huge magazine and lose most of the firefights. That being said, the giant magazine of the MG15 makes it the second most popular gun for the support class, not too far below the BAR. It is clearly in second place, but um, those are the two most popular guns, and then everything else that the support class has is just way, way below in popularity. Now having such a big discrepancy between class weapons like this is an indication that the weapons aren't particularly well balanced. It's fine to have one gun that's the most popular, but generally speaking, the second most popular shouldn't be too far behind, and the third most shouldn't be too far behind, and fourth, and so on and so forth like that. They should all be relatively shooting at the same level or somewhere within the same realm of effectiveness. But with the support class, we've got one gun that stands far above the rest, another gun that's kind of close to that, and then everything else is just way down in the ditch. And so uh, it just shows that DICE hasn't really balanced out the weapons too well, and they need to spend some more time making some of the other LMGs more effective. And personally, like I, whatever they do to the recoil and hip fire and all that crap doesn't really matter. They need to do more damage per second. It's the ultimate defining factor as to whether or not a weapon is going to be used, if it can deal as much damage or close to as much damage as some of the other more competitive guns out there, it has the highest chance of being used and being effective. So DICE needs to relook at some of the damage models, especially the damage drop-offs with the LMGs, and try and tweak that a bit. Now the support class was the most unbalanced class of the four. The other three actually weren't doing too bad overall. Some of the weapons obviously just weren't being used at all. There's some really bad guns out there still that DICE should of course still look at, but the most unbalanced category of weapon in the game are actually vehicles. And when you categorize all vehicles, that's behemoths, airplanes, transport vehicles, tanks, all into one category. The heavy tank accounts for 40% of total vehicle usage. It stands way out from the crowd. Nothing else comes close to this vehicle in terms of time used and uh, kills that this vehicle gets. The heavy tank is just beyond anything else. It's almost comical how much better it is considering that DICE already tried to patch the game so that the other tanks were more effective or other vehicles were more effective in comparison. And I could just read from the patch notes that it wasn't going to be anywhere near enough. Another interesting stat is that grenades, frag grenades, gas grenades, whatever kind of grenade, count for 8.3% of all infantry kills. And then if you start factoring stuff like some of the infantry gadgets or melee kills, that's another 11% of kills. And these are infantry induced kills. So basically we're not factoring in vehicles at this point, but if you add those two together, that means about 20% of the times uh, you kill somebody as an infantry, that's gonna be through a grenade or a gadget. Um, and when you start factoring in vehicles and other things like that, like behemoth bombardment or getting blasted by a tank or bombed by an airplane, the deaths that you receive as an infantry are going to go probably beyond 30% uh, not related to actually being shot by the enemy, which is an interesting thing to factor in just because we always think of Battlefield 1 or Battlefield games as a first-person shooter, but um, a, a significant percentage of your deaths and the kills you will be getting in the game are not actually going to be through shooting another infantry with your weapon, but through some gadget or some sort of indirect fire weapon or something along those lines. It's just an interesting way to think about the game because I think Battlefield probably has a higher percentage of this than most other shooters out there. Anyway, I do find digging through some of these stats pretty interesting. A lot of this stuff is kind of behind closed doors uh, on the dice side of things, but because there is an API for this game, people can plug into it and start tracking it like the website battlefieldtracker.com. I hope they sort of expand their stat tracking a bit more because it really does give the community a better idea of what is well balanced or what might not be so well balanced and we can sort of give better feedback going forward. That wraps it up for this video. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.